So, oops, I think I lost that one. Sylvester in Beaumont, how are you? Good, how are you? Pretty good, thanks for waiting. Oh, no problem. Well, so, did you have a question for us? Yes, I was going to ask you if you agree with the justice system in the United States. If you think, in comparison to other places in the world, do you think it's good, average, above average? Um, what, what does this have to do with atheism? Also, we're, well, we're hearing an echo. Get, so I was going to go to my point, because uh, I'm dealing with justice, kind okay. of. Okay. So, so well, hang on, we're hearing an yeah, echo. Yeah. Can you turn down whatever stream you're listening to? Oh, okay. When, when you ask us what we think about the justice system in the United States, that's such a broad topic, and I'm still hearing the echo. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you this. I called two weeks ago, and I believe, I don't remember who it was on the phone. Um, I asked if all men were created equal, and the person I was speaking with said yes. Um, I, I was like on the last five minutes on the show, I just asked the question. Sure, so it depends, sure, so it depends on, on, I'm still hearing an echo. Hearing an echo. Here, I'll put you on I'll hold. Uh, it depends on what you're actually meaning by were all men created equal, because first of all, I don't think we were created. Uh, we're yeah. not all men. Um, yeah. But as a foundational principle of our justice system, that the foundational principle is that all human beings should be considered equal in the eyes of the law, that we should strive to make sure that we are not preferencing some individuals over, other, uh, over others on, on, uh, with, without some sort of foundation. Now, if you're talking about it in a broader context, you know, uh, am I equal to Michael Jordan? Well, definitely not at basketball. I mean, that's just absurd. But the goal is for us supposed to be treated equally under the law. That the justice should be blind to, you know, our ethnicity and our sexual preferences and orientation or whatever, anything like that, our religious beliefs. Um, so, yeah, that, that as a foundation is something that I think is a good idea. So my question was, <clears throat> what is the foundation built upon? Why do we treat our fellow human beings as equals? <clears throat> Ah, it's okay. Here's the simplest way to look at this, and it's called the veil of blindness. And it's about making sure that people are treated fairly. And so, if you've got a cake, for example, and you want to divide it up equally among people, um, what you do is you have somebody cut the cake, letting them know that everybody's going to get a piece, but the person who cuts the cake gets last pick of the pieces. And that tends to make sure that because they don't know which piece they're going to get, that they strive, hopefully, to cut them fairly evenly. The other, another aspect of this is to design a system, whether it's a game, whether it's a justice system, where you don't know what your status is going to be entering the system. And if you operate with that veil of ignorance, you're more likely to get a system that is fair. And so the, the most pragmatic solution is to begin by saying, hey, I don't know where I'm going to be in this system. I don't know if I'm going to be poor, rich. I don't know if I'm going to be black, white. I don't know if I'm you know, Hispanic, whatever. I don't know what my religious heritage is going to be or whether I'm going to come in with, you know, it doesn't matter. So let me design a system that makes sure that no matter how I enter it, I have a fair shot. But, but what you just said, I agree with what you said, but we're assuming now that you already have foreknowledge of what you are, that you're entering into reality. We we create laws. Okay, after we okay. Hey, hang on. This is this is not something that actually happens. Okay, uh, nobody sat down and said, "Hmm, I'm going to create the justice system of the United States without knowing where I'm in it." It's a thought. <laughs> uh, sorry. It is a thought problem, an exercise in trying to determine what the most fair thing is going to be. We who are already in the system or in the process of creating the system, are looking at this saying, let's do it this way because this is demonstrably the most fair way. Right. It's an ideal to strive for. Okay. I was wondering, okay, say you know where you are in the system and you're so absolutely sure of yourself that you, you know that there's no way in the world that you can ever go back to being someone who could be taken advantage of in the system. Okay. Why should you create laws that should benefit everyone else? <clears throat> Well, I don't know that. I don't know how you determined that there's no way for you to have any other status. So I was saying, say for example, you're Bill Gates. What? 
What's if, your Bill say, Gates? for example, you're Bill Gates. Okay. okay. Bill Gates could Bill be Gates bankrupted bankrupt tomorrow under the right circumstances. Right. Yep. If, the, if, the, if the financial system collapses, he's just as broke as me. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not arguing just on his financial status. I'm arguing, like, based on how much he's done, how many people he's helped. There's at least one person who would take him in. There's at least one person who would help him out. <clears throat> maybe, maybe not. But what the hell does that have to do with the system? But it's based on the people he's helped out. He's acquired enough to at least survive for the rest of his life. Well, if the financial system collapses... Nobody's going to be able to afford to take him in anyway. So you're saying that the financial system collapses, it collapses for everyone? Yes, the yeah, financial the system financial doesn't system. just collapse for Bill Gates. <laughs> hmm. But the point, if you're asking, here's a better example that you might have wanted to use. I don't see any probability that I'm ever going to be African American. So why would I care about African Americans and making sure that they're treated fairly? That would have been a better example for you to use. However, yeah, yeah the, the answer is, I don't know that, for example, if I'm just being self-centered and care about me and my offspring, what if I fall in love with somebody who's African American and I have kids that are in a unfair system. I, the, the echo is just driving me crazy. It's about recognizing that your situation isn't perfect, that it can change, that you can't predict the future, um, and about recognizing that fairness is something that benefits us all. Because if you're fair, if you, if you privilege yourself in this one category, there may be other categories that you are not in the privileged class on. And so if instead you continue to push for a society that eliminates privilege uniformly, then you're, instead of being in a world where you're privileged in this arena and extremely underprivileged in this arena, you now have worked towards a, a society where you have no benefits or drawbacks of privilege in all arenas. That's the thing. Um, you, you, you tend to kind of narrow down, you narrow down to Bill Gates and financing and what he's done good. And I, I came up with the analogy, um, you know, with, with being uh, African American. Um, the point is, this is a life is a large, complex system. And the fact that you're privileged in one area doesn't mean you're going to be privileged in every area. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing I was trying to argue is, had it been life had more to it, like after you died, we could, there was something else to it then I would probably say, okay, it makes sense to make everything better for someone else. But since we already know that once we die, we just, we're dead. Okay. Next generation no, 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 no. There's no reason no. for it. So, so are you saying so, that, that, that people have to have some kind of belief in an afterlife or some kind of punishment if they do wrong or they won't be good in this life? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that there's no motivation. There should be no motivation to do good if we already know that once we die, well, we're not affected anymore by life. We're, no. a, we're a social species. Of course we're going to do well, for, do, do, as, as, do as much good as we can for each other. So, so here's the thing. What you do, and, and this is, you're basically getting what's the point behind altruism or doing anything good or anything like that. And that's because you don't know what the future's going to bring, first of all. So if I see somebody on the side of the road with a flat tire and we are all of this mindset that there's no reason to help anybody else as long as we're the privileged one without the flat tire, then we all just drive by and we contribute to this idea that nobody in society should bother doing this. However, if we all recognize that, you know what, tomorrow I might be the one with the flat tire and I'd rather live in a society where people understand that this could be them and exercise a little bit of empathy and compassion, pulling over, stop, help them change the tire, then I now live in a society where I am more likely to get help when I need it. Huh. Okay. Okay? Well, thank you so very much for your time. Sure, thanks. Thanks, bye. That was easy. Yeah. I wish I'd have gone there first. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, 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 the one problem with all of this, which I think I kind of touched on but didn't quite get to, is that we're very myopic. When, we are, when everything's going our way, we don't tend to waste much time on the thoughts about people who aren't having everything go their way. 
But training yourself to see that, to think globally and act locally, to think in a variety of different contexts and act when you have that opportunity is the way to break that myopic vision. It's the way to realize that, oh, what I do has an effect on me, it has an effect on others, and what other people do has an effect on me. I don't live in a bubble. I live cooperatively with everybody. And while I may be, you know, king for today, I might be peasant tomorrow. While I might have uh, just, you know, privilege and everything's going well and I'm healthy and I don't have any need for money, that doesn't mean that that's not going to happen in the future. And even if it doesn't ever happen, if, you, if your life just keeps better and better and better and better, contributing to a society that encourages empathy and compassion and charity and good works, still you benefit from. The reason, you know, slavery was supposedly great for the slave owners. And I've said before, if you want to find out what was wrong with it, you talk to the slaves, because it wasn't yeah. necessarily great for them. But the truth is, slavery wasn't great for the slave owners either, because it contributed to a society that was in decline. That person that you have as a slave, or that person who you've decided to not care about, could be the one that grows up to cure the disease you're eventually going to get. Could be the one who creates the next technology or improvement to the world that makes your life better that you won't be able to benefit from because you were only concerned with yourself. I'm fine, don't get me wrong, I'm fine with selfishness. I'm fine with, uh, I'm, I come first. I do. Mm -hmm. Me, my wife, my friends, my family, whatever, I tend to come first. I can break that rule that's where we get to you know, altruism and generosity. I don't have to sure. put myself first. When push comes to shove, I probably do put myself first. I think most people probably do. But the difference is, when I'm making a decision about whether or not I'm gonna put myself first, I don't just look at this one little situation, what's best for me. Because what may be absolutely best for me in this one situation could have disastrous consequences that it wind up horribly negative for me in the future. And it's seeing beyond that, seeing beyond that narrow little view of reality that we tend to live in. Um, that's how we get to an understanding of fairness. It's how we get to doing good. Well, and, and at some point you have to realize that fairness and goodwill toward other people, these are not zero-sum propositions. Mm. It's not like if I'm fair to someone that I've in some way lost something. You know, sure, I could, could privilege myself in society and and reap greater benefits, but you know, to what end? Like Matt said, if I'm um, you know, starving the person who will eventually cure the disease I might get, I really haven't helped myself. Yeah, it's, it's, we're all better off when we work to make all of us better off. Yeah. 